Hello everyone and welcome to this tutorial on 8.1 globalization and specialization and today I've been quite lazy and um, I've combined lots of teachers um, PowerPoint so I made this compilation so this is not PowerPoint and if you want it removed you can contact me so I can remove it but this is a PowerPoint to help you on 8.1 globalization and specialization it will co cover the syllable syllabus statements this one this one and uh, this one so um, globalization and specialization so first of all what is globalization it is the increasing social, technological, political, and economic interdependence and interaction between people, firms, and entire economies, economies around the world. So this can be done through several different ways. Oh, sorry. Um, Um, increasing ease of travel, growing international trade in an increasing variety of goods and services, increasing opportunities for firms to buy and sell products in any country in the world, and finally, oh sorry, two more, increasing opportunities for labor and labor and capital to move anywhere in the world, and the growth of global financial markets. Please don't take these notes down as it's it's this is just here to like recap your mind and chapter 8 normally doesn't come in the um, exam at all if it comes it's usually 8.2 or 8.3 in exchange rates or current accounts but not 8.1 because it's similar to chapter 1 in specialization as here it shows um, economies specialize in the production of those goods and services they are best able to produce because they have the natural human or man-made resources to do so and therefore specialization allows an economy to produce a greater volume of their goods and services more efficiently and they trade with each other to obtain what they want and there are two different types of advantages one is called the absolute advantage and this is the fairly easier one or straightforward one this is meant by um, when the this country can produce a product at a much lower cost per unit than any country is able to do so however um, there's also this other type called comparative advantage and um, this is the production of a product relative to other countries when its opportunity cost producing that country is lower than in any other country so if I demonstrate this in paint as many people get this confused it's actually pretty tricky so if for example I just say we have uh, Japan right here and they produce cars and television and we have Germany produce cars and television so let me make this more clear we have cars here we have TV here let's just say Japan um, in a certain period of time it can produce 100 cars and 400 television so it's um, 1 to 4 ratio and Germany um, 80 and 160 and the total this is per output per period is 180 and 560 we can clearly see that Japan has the absolute advantage in both goods because 100 to 80 400 to 160 this is absolute advantage however in Japan they would need to give up one um, TV wait sorry four TVs to produce one extra car because it's a 1 to 4 ratio however in Germany the opportunity cost of producing cars is much lower than Japan because it's 2 to 1 and this is known as the comparative advantage uh, while Germany is less efficient than Japan in producing both goods it is least inefficient in car production 
So as we revisit this definition again, a country has a comparative advantage in the production of a product relative to other countries, as we can see J Japan and Germany, um, when its opportunity cost of producing that product is lower than in any other country. So this is the opportunity cost we can see is two to one, and this um, it's four to one. <clears throat> it's the least inefficient in car production. So I hope you guys get this um, particular term or concept, absolute and comparative advantage. So there are um, some advantage of international specialization or specialization. We should know this in topic one where we learn about division of labor or specialization and um, it's fairly straightforward. A higher output lower cost we all know these two ones however we have to apply it to international specialization so it means countries have to trade engaging in international trade can help in exchange of new management ideas information about new products and new technology and if you increase in competition um, taking p part in international trade can also increase competitive pressure on firms to be efficient and gives um, consumer more choice However, there are some disadvantages of specialization. So um, there can be a decrease in demand. This is uh, fairly straightforward too. As um, firms in other countries may become more efficient at producing the product or a substitute product may be developed. And um, there may be supply problems like rice hit by a bad weather. And this links to interdependency it means it's more and more dependent on that country producing that product and if, if there is like a bad weather or a natural disaster as here shown they, the domestic firms cannot get their raw materials from one country to another and that is bad and finally there are trade restrictions which we will visit later in 8.1 um, right here so um, international trade this involves the movement and exchange of physical goods such as materials component parts equipment and finished products as well as services ideas money and labor across international borders so this definition we have to know this is from the my um, the economics teachers from Bangkok Patina School I copied a bit of their PowerPoint so thank you to them um, free trade it's the basic definition is allow other countries unlimited access to your markets however there are things such as protectionism or trade barriers and as we can see from the snipping tool right here um, we have to describe methods of trade protection and we've We've already done this. We have to do these two before this video ends. So the advantages of free trade. Number one, this allows countries to benefit from specialization. So that um, this means that they can produce what they are but able to and um, then trade their surplus. We can also um, the advantages include increased consumer choice and as consumers can enjoy a greater variety of goods and services from across the world this also increases competition and efficiency and firms must produce their costs uh, must improve their costs and product quality to compete with overseas producers it also creates additional business and employment opportunities as they might expand thus um, they create more jobs and finally it allows firms to access the best workforces materials and technologies from anywhere in the world however there are some disadvantages of free trade um, such as um, trade with low-cost econo economies is threatening jobs in many developed economies and reducing opportunities for less developed economies economies to grow their industries second of all um, it's increasing the rate at which we are depleting natural resources uh, third of all, it increases the exploitation of workers and environment and many less developed economies by uh, multinationals are attracted to them by low wages and taxes. We can also revisit this point here in chapter 7 where I've explained about the um, the one like the exam technique on advantages on and disadvantages of multinationals coming into a country and finally it increases the gap between poor and rich this is chapter 5 stuff with the um, 
what is it called? The chapter five thingy of something like uh the I forgot what it's called. The thingy um a, a redistribution of income, sorry. Um okay, so um barriers to trade and protectionism. So um trade barriers we have to know this. This is the last point on eight point one and um there are five different kinds and we have to know like three of them which are mainly use tariffs and these are indirect taxes on the prices of imported goods to discourage domestic demand um, second of all is subsidize and these are government grants paid to domestic producers to reduce their production costs enabling them to sell their products at a lower price than overseas producers however there might be a downside of subsidization as we will visit him later um, quotas this is a limit on the volume of uh, an imported good allowed into a country embargo is a complete ban on the import of a good to a country and excess quality standards or high control standards it's like uh, unreasonable con quality controlled standard licensing requirement for imported products so it's basically like impossible it's they might say like 99 percent this you have to have 100 grams of this uh, 50 grams of this you have to meet these certain criteria to be able to import their products there's arguments for trade barriers I'll skip through this pretty quickly protect infant industries infant uh, also known as sunrise industries these are new technologies and gives new firms the chance to develop grow um, more globally competitive protect sunset sunset is declining this is because they are at their peak and they still employ lots of people and as you protect the sunset industries this hopefully slows down the rate of decline third one is protect strategic industries this might be agriculture energy or um, something the government might be willing to invest in fourth would be the pr protect domestic firms from dumping and dumping is a term um, as a type of predatory pricing and um, export firms may put prices really low that's it that's dumping fifth of all is to limit over specialization as we can see if you over specialize you inter there's the concept of interdependency sixth of all it's um, to correct a trade imbalance there might be a trade surplus which you export more than import like China or import more than export like USA that's a trade deficit um, and seventh of all is um, as other countries use trade barriers and this links to the fourth point of the argument against which is retaliation so if you put a trade barrier the other country would put a trade barrier too however the opposite of this is known as trade liberalization and this is the removal of barriers to trade and this improves global allocation of resources um, um, second point or first yeah might be restrict consumer choice um, yeah so if there's a trade barrier there's no free trade so consumers have less choice and it also restricts new business opportunities and this might not business might not expand does not create and it does not create jobs and third of all it still protects inefficient domestic firms and this means that inefficient domestic firms um, protected from overseas competition will continue to be inefficient so these are um, hopefully this video ha ha has helped you on um, 14 I mean 8.1 um, these three points again if you want this video taken down um, please message me and thank you for the economics teacher for helping me put this thing together.